Luke here for some box. Delighted this evening to be joined by Robbie Davis Jr. Robbie, how are we doing? I'm good, thanks. Be okay. Yeah, all good, thanks. Thanks for your time this evening. So we'll get straight into it, Robbie. Uh, we had the, the announcement recently. I think it's been in the works for a while. You weren't allowed to say too much, but you'll be taking on Liam Parrow in Liverpool. It's a big fight. It's a big opportunity. How excited are you to get back in the ring and get cracking in 2023? Yeah, um, there was talks about it quite a bit ago, and like I was saying, couldn't say too much, didn't know if it was going to happen or not. Um, then we finally come to a deal, got it over the line, and I'm just made up. It landed in Liverpool. Couldn't couldn't ask for anything better, really. Yeah, absolutely. Now with Liam Parrow, you mentioned that you know something was in the works uh, previously. You couldn't say too much. Um, he of course had that viral knockout of Brock Jarvis on on the matchroom card in in Australia. Was this? A fight that was a potential fight on the back of that win, or was that something that was in the works prior to that as well? Was your name in that kind of mix with Eddie and with Matt Room and getting no, um, no, um, there'd been no talks of a uh, Paro coming over here before that win, and then he got that big win, got like a bit of um, started making a bit of noise, and then obviously Matt Room came to us and said, "What well, do you think about this fight?" Obviously, with me, I just I'll fight anyone, so I was a bit like. If it if if it if it has some purpose behind the fight, then I'll take it. He said to me like, "Listen, he's got a good rank, and he'll get you right in the back in the mix if you win this one." I was like, "That's the fight for me, then. Just seal the deal." Yeah. So as we say with uh, Liam Parrow, he had that that viral knockout or, or the, the knockout that went viral, if you like, of, of Brett Jarvis. It was in the first round. It was, it was quite a stunning knockout. What did you make of that, Robert? Have you if you went back and there's not too much you can take from that performance, but have you sat down and and watched it back with Shane? It was just one of them. It was um, Brock coming to the come into the fight cold, in my opinion, and got caught too early. Couldn't make much of it. Um, couldn't say like how it was going to go or anything like that. He was um, they would just look like they were figuring each other out. He threw a one bomb and it landed, <laughs> and that was it. Have you looked at uh, Liam Parrell's career up until now? Like you say, he wasn't really on the radar, and he's kind of broke onto the scene. Um, have you have you kind of looked look back over his career? Are you are you want to do that, Robbie? You want to go back and look at fighters, previous fights ahead of fighting them? Yeah, yeah. Like I I know his career now inside out, upside down, and back to front. I know everyone he's fought. I know everyone who he's fought, who they fought. I've actually I I, I get a, I'm obsessed with it. So not just with like me opponents. I just I'm like that with boxing in general. Like so, I normally know a lot about anyone that's my weight especially um so i already knew of liam knew what he was doing over in australia things like that i remember he like he got a fight out in america i know he had a tough one out there so uh, I, I, it's not like that i had a look i, I had an eye on him because i was thinking of pos a potential matchup it was just a you're always looking through all the fighters that are like coming through at the same time as you they're all on the radar all on the up all winning so it was just one of them. And then when the opportunity came and I know he's, uh, he's built up a good ranking, I just snatched that hand off. I was like, I want that fight no matter what. So it begs the question, Robbie, what 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 do you make of him? I'm going to put you on the spot there. What, tell us what You can't tell us too much about what he does wrong because that's what you're going to try and capitalise on. But what have you seen that he does well? Do you know what he's saying? He doesn't do anything I haven't seen before, but he's a, he's a good boxer. Do you know what I mean? Like That's probably the best way, way to say it. Like, he's a good boxer. He does everything good. Um, there's nothing like I look at and think like, oh, he's terrible at that. Um, there's a few things that obviously my team have looked at and they they want me to work on work going into the fight. And um, as 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 you know, like Shane's um, a master for tactics and things like that. So we'll be coming into him um, to do a job. So obviously you can't look past Liam Power, but in your mind you're going in there to get the victory, lead on to bigger and better things. I think he holds the WBO global title, which is. We all know too many belts in boxing, Robbie, but that does yeah, mean yeah. With, with the WBO. So is is this a fast track to a world title shot? We've seen him fragment since the Josh Taylor situation, which we'll touch on later, but they all became vacant and Regis Progress went and picked up a world title and other guys are picking up these these vacant belts. So is getting a win over Liam Parrow, is that a fast track to a world title in your eyes? Like getting a win over Liam, it puts me right in the mix, especially for the WBO title. Um, I'll be knocking on door for someone like the winner of Taylor and Cattrall or along them lines or my next one will be like a final eliminator to get in, in the mix. So this is like a fast track, like you're saying, to get me right back in the mix. Robbie, how do you approach this fight in your mind? How do you think it's going to be perceived as well by the public with 
Liam Powell's coming over here. He's, he's not going to be very well known to your public in the UK. Um, boxing fans are going to know him, of course. Uh, you've got home advantage. Do you look at this? Uh, who, who would you make favourite, if you like? Obviously, you're going to back yourself, but if you was a bookmaker, who would you have down as the favourite? Like, I, I imagine if it was anywhere else, the bookies would have had him like a, a decent favourite going into this fight. But I think because of it's in Liverpool, um, I'm on a good run at the moment against him. Um, like, good, 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 good opposition. I think, um, I think it'll be close. I do. I don't know. I think. I think he 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 could be slight favorite because you got to remember he's unbeaten and I'm not. But um, as you know, in this game, it's um, numbers mean nothing. And um, if you look at across the across the board of the opposition I've been in with, um, the the titles I've won, the the people's back gardens I've been to, things like that. Um, it just like I'd have his record if I'd if I'd done it his way. He'd probably have my record if he'd done it my way. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I think with this this card on the under uh, Callum Smith undercard, these are the two fights that that stand out as a bit left field, if you like, with the the, the undefeated guys coming over to the UK. He was yourself against Liam Paro and Jack Cullen taking on Diego Pacheco. I think they're very similar fights, if you like. You know, the, the two uh, matchrooms prospects from overseas coming over to take on two of our guys, uh, pretty much in the backyard. I know Jack Cullen's from from Bolton, but guys that we yourself that you've been in the trenches, you've been in them wars. And you, you know maybe Pacheco and and Liam Parrott have not had those those gut checks if you like you've been there you've done that you got the t shirt bloodstained t shirt and the same with Jack Cullen really yeah um can't I can't say too much about Jack and Pacheco um like I, I don't really I haven't really looked too much into their fight but like what you're saying about Liam um I think he has had a gut check before when he went out to America and um, that was a tough fight for him I think he got it on a split decision he got put down he got up. So I think he has had his good checks, but I just don't think he's been in with anyone that is um, established as myself. Yeah, of course. It, it does look to be a, a good fight, Robbie. Tell us about working with Shane McGuigan. I know you've been there for a few fights now. You're on a good run of form. Uh, just how important is, is Shane McGuigan to Robbie Davis Jr. at this point of your career? Yeah, definitely. Like, obviously, when the time came and I was looking for a new team and things like that and the opportunity came up to train with Shane McGuigan, then when I went down there, Obviously, you've got to get that feel with someone even before the boxing. Like you've got to be able to, like, bounce off each other, get get a good feel for each other. And then we got on. We we were, were similar age, and like we we had similar, just like similar people. Really, we got on really well outside of the ring. And then when you start working with him, and like he gives every individual fighter individual time all day, every day. Like we all have set times when we train, things like that. We don't train with each other. We all have one-on-ones with Shane. He doesn't train every fighter the same because every fighter has different attributes. What he, he knows work well with some fighters and don't work the best with others. Yeah, and I just think like yeah, he can he can dissect like the smaller things to, to your game. Like what I feel like some coaches would just let slip where Shane will go to detail on the slightest of things and he'll he'll make it repetitive until you get it right. And then obviously you start seeing it in fights and sparring and things like that. And then before you know it, it's just second nature. And uh, I just think like this stage of my career, it's like there can't be no backward steps. And I just think being with someone like Shane is beneficial. You mentioned there that he, he kind of dissects and breaks down the little things that build up into uh, a big thing on fight night, if you like. Is there any one particular thing, Robbie, that you could put your finger on and go, you know what, that's completely different now as to when I first started training with Shane McGuigan? Is there any, you know, is it footwork maybe? Is it something out of the ring? It was just, it was just more like, in, in, like, as you've seen, like over the years, like I've had some absolute wars, but um, some of them times when I've had them absolute wars, I could have just got to me boxing and, probably jabbed a few people's heads off and moved up, moved on to bigger and better things, but I'd let the occasion get to me and stuff like that. Like with Shane, he knows how to like keep you calm. He knows when you when you need to turn it on. He knows when you need to go into the trenches. He knows when you need to box. And because I've got that I've got that like belief in what he knows. Like sometimes in the past, like when I was with other coaches and stuff like that, I, I used to like think I know better. Uh, and when you've got someone with Shane, like who's been there, done it, wore the T-shirt, like, you respect his decisions more in your corner, especially if he tells you you need to do something, you, you just go with it. And I just think, like, these sort of fights, what I'm getting into now, like, like 
I I heard Adrian Brown doing an interview the other day, and he was saying like, when you get to that top tier, like everyone can fight. You need a coach in your corner that can to give you that extra one percent, them tactics, what you need going into the fight, and like that that's a hundred percent right, and that that one percent could be the difference at this level. Yeah, absolutely. You know. Robbie, I'm going to go off on a, a bit of a sidestep here. We'll come back to, to the interview in a second. Uh, you mentioned there about some of the wars that you've been in. And the, the first one, of course, that springs to mind, uh, Lewis Ritson, what you know, what, what a great fight that was. He's recently announced a fight with O'Hara Davis. Now, that's in, in your weight class. You say that you keep an eye on on the weight class that you're involved in. What, what do you make of that fight? Again, just going off on one a little bit. We'll come back to the interview. But what do you make of Lewis Ritson against O'Hara Davis? Well, obviously, in the past, if you've ever followed it, like... Me and O'Hara have never got on. He said yeah. some bad things about me city. He said some bad things about me dad when he was dying. So, like, like it's a strong way to say, but I fucking hate him. Like, I, I, I can't talk about him without, like, the ears on me neck standing up. So, like, I, I will 100% be supporting Lewis in that fight. Like, I couldn't think of anything worse. So, like, I just, I hope Lewis sets himself up for bigger things and just absolutely steamrolls him. So you mentioned there with um, with Shane in your corner that you've got someone there that you can listen to and that, that maybe is, is a, a, a cuter voice in your ear and, and stopping you going off on one yourself and you'd look at fights differently. You're not going to make excuses for fights and it's razor close with Lewis Ritson, but do you believe that if you had Shane McGuigan in the corner that night, the result would have been that 1% different, that would have been a victory because it was, as I say, razor close with Lewis? Yeah, it was a... That was one of them fights. It was whatever you like. Like, you either had my work rate out working him, or you wanted his eye catching shots where that one big left hook might win in the round. But for the rest of the round, I'd be on top. Do you know what I mean? So it was one of them. But obviously, it's in the past now. You'll never know when you're with another coach or whatever. But sometimes when you just look back on things and you think I could have done things differently, like, they they the sort of fights I could have made a lot easier for myself. But like you say, it's all woulda, shoulda, coulda. Do you know what I mean? It's in the past now. Like if me and Lewis keep winning, you never know one day we could do it again, maybe. Is it a surprise to you, Robbie, that that fight's not been run back already? I know you guys have took on big fights in the meantime, but given that it was such a great fight. It was a fight of the year for, for some people. I think I might have even had it down as my fight of the year. Um, is it a surprise to you that it's not happened already? Given in yeah, the, I think it, one year it, 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 all the time. It, it, isn't it? If we'd have both stayed with the same promotion, um, even with wins or losses, I think it would have came back up again. But I think because obviously Lewis went his own way, done his own thing. Um, he's had an eliminator. He's been beat. He's got back on the horse. He's winning again. Same like myself. I got beat in a fight that no one thought I'd lose and then got myself back on the horse with Shane, stuff like that. Like These are like, if we were both with the same promotion company, like them sort of fights could have happened because... Every, even say there was like no big fights on the line for like me with Pato or him with O'Hara it like makes sense for us to fight again do you know what I mean but it's all it's all one of them now he's with, with different promotional companies so can't really see it happening anytime soon but never say never of course Robbie you're on a good run of form since that, that set back to Venezuela three wins from three fights two stoppages as well looking really impressive but the last fight came in in May, so you just fill us in a little bit on on you know the the, the gap away from the ring. I think it'd be about ten months by the time the fight night runs around. Um... Yeah. Well, there, there was like there was there was talk of me fighting in like October, November, and then, um, I think basically what it was, it just wasn't the the right type of fights. Like not on my behalf, I think like because you you know what it's like in boxing. You win, your next one's the best one. You win, your next one's the best one, and like it was either a stagnating. St- Fighter like same sort of level, even though my last opponent was like world title, being in with world champions and stuff like that. Me one before that was world title challenger, but you're still always looking for that step up. And then if it would have come back down a level or like, or like from one British level, you've, you've got more risk in them sort of fights than being in the big fights sometimes. Do you know what I mean? Because you, you can't get up for them or whatever reason. I know I know it's hard to say, like, you should all get up for any fight at this level, but I'm just saying, like, in a figure of speech, sometimes that's what it's like. And um, 
Like, if it, if Eddie hadn't come to me with a big fight like this, like, I probably would have been absolutely devastated that they'd been gutted. Like, if it was just, like, a normal Eastern European fight or something like that, I'd have been a bit gutted. But when this one got put on the table and, like, everything that come with it, and if you win, the opportunities that are on the back of it, then it made sense for me. I thought, you know what, well, it's been worth the wait. And I'm not like someone that's been wait, waiting on the couch, getting fat, like... I've been in the been in the gym. Do you know what I mean? I had Christmas off and got straight back in the gym. Like for me, that is the only hard part because now I've got like a little girl and things like that, and I, I, I train so far away from home. And like I've spent like six months, seven months, back and forth from London. Do you know what I mean? And like I think I'm fighting, then I'm not. I think I'm fighting, then I'm not. Do you know what I mean? I've had about three camps back to back, but finally I've only just got a fight. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. But, uh, you but like one, 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 once we got it sealed, like that, I, 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 I've been happy since. Robbie, we've seen what the the Echo Arena, the MS Bank Arena, whatever the, the you know they call it now. It's always the Echo Arena. It's the same as Manchester. They try calling it the yeah. Echo. Okay, it'll always be the Echo. Yeah, that's it. We still call the the Manchester Arena the MEN. Uh, but what what's we know as British boxing fans, how special of a venue that is, and and you scousers love to make a racket. Uh, just what. Can Liam and Paro expect on fight nights? Bustling with uh, Scousers on the card, Callum Smith headlining, yourself in a war. What What is Liam and Paro going to expect? Or what can he expect from the fans and the atmosphere that he's going to be greeted by on the night? Do you know what? I wouldn't say the other Liverpool fans at him did like discredit him or anything like that. I think they might be um, there might be a little lack of knowledge of knowing how good he is or something like that. But um. If he's never been in like an arena that gets rowdy, like he'll feel it in there because it is it is a rowdy atmosphere. It'll be electric in there on the night. Yeah, absolutely. You mentioned before about working with Shane McGuigan, and we know that you've got a big stable of fighters at McGuigan's, uh, but he's able to dissect his time between everybody, make sure they get you know the 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 one to one that you guys need. But how exciting and how much of a how, how, how much does it improve you to be around a winning stable, a successful stable, and a happy stable? You've got Daniel Dubois, the Azeem brothers, uh, Ellie Scottney. I don't want to miss anybody out. You'll probably pick up on some that I've, I've missed out. But yeah. uh, how much inspiration, uh, I think it's the word I was looking for, do you take from being as part of a such a, a great team? Yeah, that's it. It's like um, when you're in the type of gym, it's like a winner mentality and everyone's bouncing off each other. Everyone's like giving each other that little extra nudge. Uh, when you're having them days and you're feeling tired, you've got someone to bounce off to drag you through it. And um, I'm like, it's good company to be in. Do you know what I mean? Um, really are a great stable of fighters, and everyone's got their own ambition. They're all working towards their own goals. They're all, we're all at different stages of our career, but I feel like the public and um, boxing fans are always watching our gym because everyone's always doing well. Like you've got myself now, that could break into a world could break into a world title fight. Um, then you've got like Chris Billum Smith could be on the verge of fighting for a world title. You've got Ellie Scottney could be on the verge of fighting for a world title. You've got Daniel Dubois, a fringe world champion. You've got Caroline and uh, Adam and Hassan. They they could they them three could be the next generation that carry the sport carry the sport of boxing. So the gym is absolutely bouncing, but. For, some, for someone like Shane, he's got to keep on top of all that. Yeah, absolutely. It, they're not the type of gym that um, where you just leave someone on the wayside, wayside. Like everyone needs that time. Everyone needs to feel like they're ready to go at any time. And I feel like that's what the gym's like. Absolutely. Of course, it's it's good and important to, to have fun along the way. Now, for any of our viewers that have not seen it, you'll have to check out Robbie's social media to catch up with what I'm about to say. But Robbie, what's this whole argument about a chipper and a Chinese? <laughs> where, where did that argument oh. from? <laughs> right. So me and <laughs> right. So me and Ellie walking 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 home from the gym. I can't remember how the conversation came up, but by man in Liverpool, if someone says to me, Do you want to like for an example, if I say to my missus on the weekends, shall we get a chippy? We're thinking salt and pepper chicken, fried rice, cat and a curry, uh, two mares, spring rolls. If some if someone says to her, Do you want a chippy? She thinks a 
fish and chips, chips and a sausage. And I'm like, no, because by man, like we sell like Chinese food in a chippy. So it is called a chippy. So we started this debate. I'm not messing. I've had more interaction on my Twitter over this chippy. It's still going now over this chippy scenario than I do off my boxing. <laughs> God's honestly like, where, where, where are you from? Manchester. So if you if someone says to you, do you want a chippy? I know you're up north, but you're done. I'm not sure. Do you automatically think fish and chips or do you think like like anything really like Chinese restaurants or food? Like if you're ordering a chippy? Robbie, I'll be honest, I don't know about what I got on the wrong side of you or the wrong side of Ella. But, <laughs> <laughs> but kind of, you know, this is why I found it so funny because I'm right in the middle of both mindsets. Like I, I do think it's in, in, in the moment, I think chippy, I think, oh, are we Chinese chippy or are we going chippy, English chippy? You know? Yeah, so see, I, like, I, yeah. Like maybe maybe we should say Chinese chippy, but you just say chippy for quickness. Do you know what I mean? But I don't even think in Liverpool, I don't even think there is just like a fish and chip bar. I don't even think they do them anymore because because they're so the 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 opposition it just crushed them <laughs> because all the others do everything else. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So away, away from that argument, we'll, we'll let that uh, social media settle that. Uh, Adam Azim, uh, gym mate of yours, he's in a big fight this weekend. Highly, yeah. highly touted prospects, spectacular in the ring, the, the victory over Ryland Charlton. Uh, just how special is Adam Azim uh, to, to you, Robbie? You know, same weight class, you're going to be sparring and training together and whatnot. Um, he's, as I say, a prospect. He's coming through the ranks, smashing through the ranks. Just how special is Adam Azim? Don't worry, he's, he, he's, he, he's a talent. Like, And I, I know it's, it's one of them where you think, oh, I'm from the same gym. Of course, I'm going to say that. But... There isn't a person that comes to our gym, like whether the sparring or more, just in his presence when he's training. Like, like he's he's just he's I don't know what it is, but he's just got it. Do you know what I mean? He just gets boxing. Like he's got the speed. He's powerful. He's got a good ring IQ. He can he can do it all. Do you know what I mean? And that's just a young age. Like you you don't normally see it. Do you know what I mean? Like even though I'm the experienced one. If I wanted to ask him about something, he'd give his opinion because you 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 know it'd be it'd be good because he he knows the game like he he like even this level now I know this is a good fight for him on the weekends but it will have it will be a high level of opposition before you'd even see him go through the gears because he's that good. Yeah, we look forward to to the journey. You know, one fight that's starting to to get a bit of traction, and it's not one for now. Maybe a couple of years down the line. But Adam Azim and, and Dalton Smith, you know, that's a, a tantalising prospect, Robbie. Yeah. Yeah, like, um, no Dalton for a few years. Like, he's a great lad, um, and he's another very special fighter coming through young lad. Um, I think them two will be the two that um, will be the be carrying the sport in the light welterweight division. But saying that, like, Adam's a big frame lad. He could go up the weights in a few years, so it might be one where they just miss each other because of because of the size and weights and things. Yeah, we can cross our fingers and hope. Uh, Robbie, just before we finish, I want to get your uh, opinion on a few things. At the, the top of the 140-pound division, it seems to be a bit murky, a bit messy at the minute. We've got Josh Taylor and Jack Cattrall that, you know, waiting a long time to get that rematch on, then it was announced, and then Josh Taylor, unfortunately, suffers an injury. That fight's off. Um, if yeah. you put yourself in the shoes of Jack Cattrall after that first fight, uh, everyone has their opinion on how that fight went. Um, and then wait so long for the rematch, and then the rematch falling through. Put yourself in Jack Cattrall's shoes. What are you thinking at the minute, Robbie? Um, if I, if I was Jack now, like I was one of the people who heavily thought Jack won. Um, but also you can't just stand still waiting for someone. Like he's got to get on with his own career. So I've just seen I've just seen announced before that um, he's going to fight um, at the end of March. So I think that's the right thing to do. I think he's just got to. Get back on the horse. The fight comes up with Josh Grace. He's up for it. But if it doesn't work his way back towards world titles of his own. Yeah, absolutely. And, of course, Regis Progray. Um, again, Robbie, I don't know how much you keep up with social media. We know it's all social media, so you don't know what to believe and what you can believe and whatnot. But Regis Progray mm -hmm. seems to be having difficulty getting a, a big fight. And it's all coming down to purse splits and what fighters are making. As boxing fans, we don't want to hear that. I know you guys are all going to want to get paid and get as much money as you can. But there's also the the, the old-school boxing fan, if you like, inside everyone that wants people to chase glory and belts and opportunity. And it seems Teofimo Lopez and... Uh, 
Ramirez. I, I turned down the opportunity to fight Regis Prograde because of the purse split, which isn't that the, the champion's advantage for earning the world title and you kind of take less to get more if you get the victory? Yeah, I think cause, because they're already former world champions, they've already been there and done it. They don't like have the, the hunger to, to be that world champion right now, especially when they're making a lot of money. Like Jose Ramirez can sell out stadiums in his hometown. So he's probably thinking, I'm not selling out this stadium or this arena where you get 75% because you're the champion or whatnot. So you'd have an argument for both of them. Like from a standpoint from like someone like myself, who's never reached that the highest level, like I'd be like, fine, you take the the 70% or whatever you deserve it, you're the champion. I'll come to your backyard, blah, blah, blah. But someone like Ramirez and um who's the other one you said, sorry. Uh, Timo Lopez. Um, Timo Lopez. Well, I don't think I don't even think Lopez sells as well as Ramirez, but because they've they've already won their world titles and things, they're thinking like, I'm not selling myself short just for this one fight when a world title will come my way eventually. Yeah, good good way of uh, good way of putting it there, Robbie. It's interesting to hear. Uh, just to close off, Robbie, uh, what can we expect from fight night? The best version of me, like I am going to be ready to rock and roll on fight night. It's going to be an exciting night. It's going to be an exciting fight. I wish you the best of luck, Robbie. Uh, thanks for the time this evening. And uh, yeah, I wish you all the best for the fight. Appreciate it. Nice one.